Hello everybody, welcome back to the quick take and welcome back to another video of me breaking down a world-class manager who will probably never come to Chelsea. The focus of today's video being Julian Nagelsmann. Following Bayern Munich's two-win loss against Bayer Leverkusen and their second place status in the Bundesliga, the Bayern Munich authority took the shocking decision to sack Julian Nagelsmann as head coach and bring in fellow German and Chelsea legend Thomas Tuchel. Nagelsmann, who is only 35 years old, is a highly respected and tactically excellent coach who has established himself among the elites of world football, his work at RB Leipzig really putting his name on the football map. Like many coaches in the modern game, Julian Nagelsmann started off as a player. He even played under Thomas Tuchel's tutelage at Augsburg in the 2008 season, before retiring at the age of 20 due to a particularly bad knee injury. Following the end of his playing career, Julian studied business administration before transferring to sports science. It was around this time that Thomas Tuchel took the struggling Julian Nagelsmann under his wing and made him his scout. Julian eventually took a coaching role at 1860 Munich's under 17s team where we will discover his passion for coaching. The young German would go on to coach the Hoffenheim youth team, was given the nickname Mini Mourinho, even winning the Bundesliga youth title with the under-19 side before being promoted to his first senior role in 2016, head coach for Hoffenheim. At the time, Julian Nagelsmann was only 28 years old and became the youngest ever permanent head coach in the history of the German league. When he took over Hoffenheim in February of 2016, they were sitting at 17th in the league, the threat of relegation looming over the club like a dark cloud. Nagelsmann came in and took them to safety, finishing 15th. What is even more impressive is the following season, Nagelsmann took the team that was fighting relegation to a 4th place spot in the Bundesliga and a place in the Champions League for the first time in the club's history which is just an incredible achievement and that should be recognised as such. Hoffenheim decided to extend Julian Nagelsmann's contract until 2021. However, following the culmination of the 18 and 19 season, the young manager would make a move to RB Leipzig where he would really make a name for himself. Nagelsmann hit the ground running at Leipzig in the 1920 season, coaching his team to a 4-0 win away to Union Berlin in the opening game of the Bundesliga. In Game 4 of the season, the young German was tested against the mighty Bayern Munich, taking a point away from the tough fixture. Overall, his first season at Leipzig went very well. Although interrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic and ensuing lockdowns, Nagelsmann's RB Leipzig finished third in the Bundesliga, went to the semi-final of the Champions League before getting knocked out by his former mentor Thomas Tuchel with PSG, not before, however, knocking out Spurs 4-0 on aggregate and Atletico Madrid in the quarter-finals. He finished the league with a highly respectable 18 wins, 12 draws and 4 losses, even beating Mainz 8-0. Even more impressive is that he managed to coach Timo Werner to score 34 goals in all competitions. Any coach that can get 34 goals out of Timo Werner has to be a half-decent coach in my eyes. It must also be noted that one of the first players Nagelsmann signed as RB Leipzig head coach was Christopher Nkunku, who has now signed a contract with Chelsea and will be joining the club before the start of the 23-24 season. Hopefully, this is a reunion in the making. The 2021 season was much of the same, although this time Leipzig finished second in the league, winning 19, drawing 18 and only losing 7 after losing their top goalscorer Timo Werner to Chelsea for 50 million euros. Leipzig were active in the transfer window that summer, bringing in Hungarian wonderkid and potential Chelsea target Dominic Schoboschlaier and the Croatian defender Josko Gavardiol for just 16 million euros from Dynamo Zagreb. Although that can be put down to now Chelsea technical director Christopher Vivell. During the 2021 season, it was announced that following the departure of Hansi Flick from Bayern Munich to become the head coach of the German national squad, Julian Nagelsmann would become his successor after signing a five-year deal with the German giants. This was a deal completed on the 27th of April 2021, with Bayern Munich paying 25 million euros to Leipzig as compensation, a world record fee at the time. Nagelsmann's coaching career at Bayern had a somewhat ropey start, losing three out of his first four preseason games. This form, however, ended in preseason as Nagelsmann coached Bayern to a Bundesliga title, along with a DFL Super Cup trophy in his first season. During the season, Nogsman brought a few of his star players from RB Leipzig with him, the French centre-back Diet Upamecano and Marcel Sabitzer, who is currently on loan at Manchester United. Julian Nagelsmann's Bayern Munich were knocked out of the Champions League quarter-finals by Villarreal 2-1 on aggregate, a close fixture decided by squandered chances and luck from the Spanish side. 
His record after his first season as Bayern Munich head coach stood at 33 wins, 7 losses and 7 draws in all competitions, giving him a respectable 70.2% win rate. His second and last season as Bayern Munich head coach was arguably better than his first. During the summer transfer window, Nagelsmann added Liverpool winger Sadio Mane and won the race to sign Chelsea target and Dutch international Matthias De Ligt from Juventus. It was during this time Bayern Munich sold their talisman and top goalscorer for seven seasons, Robert Lewandowski to Barcelona for 45 million euros, a huge loss for Julian Nagelsmann. Bayern Munich currently sits second in the league behind Borussia Dortmund, winning 15, losing three and drawing seven games whilst going unbeaten in the Champions League with Pep Guardiola's Manchester City next in the quarterfinals. At the time of his sacking, Nagelsmann had won three trophies for Bayern Munich and finished with 71.4% overall win rate and an 83.3% win rate in the Champions League. So, what's his style of play? What is preferred formations? Let's find out. Julian Nagelsmann is an incredibly versatile coach in that he's not stuck to one formation everywhere he goes. He's a coach obsessed with winning, but winning with a certain flair. The German once said, the Bundesliga is about results, but I like to get those results with a certain style. For example, at Hoffenheim he played what some may call a 5-1-2-2, a system that allowed for the two central midfielders to spread out across the pitch and wreak havoc. Like many of his fellow German coaches, most notably Ralf Ragnick, Julian Nagelsmann imposes a heavy press against his opponents, but when his team receives the ball, they don't rush themselves. Instead, after regaining possession, Julian installs stability into his side, allowing for a more methodical attack with fewer mistakes. You must remember at this point he was working with a team that was practically battling relegation. It's not like Luis Enrique who had Messi, Neymar and Suarez at his disposal. He was playing chess with a board full of pawns and a knight or two. Tifo Football did an excellent breakdown of Julian Nagelsmann's tactics at Hoffenheim. I highly recommend you check them out after the video. In defence, Nagelsmann's wide shape allowed for an overload to attack the ball and nullify the danger, pressing in a very strategic manner. It's not constant like Hansi Flick's or Ralf Ragnick's kind of press, but it's done with more thought behind it. When attacking, Hoffenheim would look to play through the middle, hoofing the ball up to the strikers, who would then play the ball back into the midfield, beginning the attack in the opponent's half. If this wasn't a viable option, the ball would be spread out wide with the wing-backs bombing forward, creating a six-man attack almost, which is highly effective against teams that drop deep. <coughs> Every team that plays against Chelsea. <coughs> the passing is smooth. Players like to drop between lines to receive the ball. The shape is ever-morphing to best break the opponent. It's no wonder after a year of Nagelsmann's teaching, Hoffenheim finished in the top four. At Leipzig, Nagelsmann went to the next level in terms of coaching. Similarly to Graham Potter at Brighton, Nagelsmann's RB Leipzig set out as best to fit their opponents, although overall, the more favoured formations were the 3-4-3 and a variant of the 4-4-2. Nagelsmann's Leipzig liked to play out from the back, meaning a keeper comfortable distributing the ball out with his feet and confident defenders were key to making it work. The defensive base would be happy and play the ball between themselves, inviting pressure towards one side of the pitch before switching the play quickly to the advancing wingback. Pacey forwards like Werner, or in our case Mikhailo Mudrik and Christopher Nkungu come this summer, would also be ready to make runs in behind the defensive line that have pushed forward as Leipzig invited the pressure. Think of it like a pull counter in boxing. Ball playing defenders are key. In some cases for Leipzig, Upa Meccano were pushed into the midfield, creating passing lanes and allowing for a more progressive pivot player to enter more dangerous areas of the field. This was a system also utilised when Nagsman used a single pivot midfield, alleviating some of the defensive responsibilities, creating a 2-4-2-2. Although it can be said Nagelsmann does prefer to use a double pivot, allowing for the team structure to be staggered. I would also like to recommend the channel Football Made Simple and their excellent breakdown for Julian Nagelsmann's tactics at RB Leipzig. The more defensive player in the double pivot drops deeper while others advance. At the same time, Nagelsmann instructs his strikers to drop slightly deeper, disrupting the defensive shape of the opponent. This allows for quick balls over the top for fast players like Werner and Nkunku. A large part of Leipzig's system under Nagelsmann was their verticality, long balls up the field from their defence. Levy Colwell has had an excellent season so far at Brighton, De Zerbi has really improved his short and long passing ability. In fact, Levy Colwell currently sits in the 99th percentile of defenders for attempted passes and averages 3.91 progressive passes per 90 minutes of football, making him a perfect option for Julian Nagelsmann. 
When attacking, Nogsman is all about overloads, pressure. He wants to squeeze the life out of his opponents, making them unbalanced, outnumbered wherever possible. Julian Nagsman once said, My philosophy is to attack the opponents near their own goal because your own way to the goal is not as long if you get the ball higher up. Now, as his attacks can be all or nothing, losing possession during the attack can be ropey. The first line of defence is to press even more, the midfield pivot staggering to try and win the ball back as high up the pitch as possible in the hopes of continuing an attack. If this fails and the pivot is bypassed, it's up to the back three to defend against the opposition. For us, this could be players like Benoit Badiashile, Wesley Fofana, Kalidou Koulibaly, Levy Colwell, Thiago Silva and potentially a new centre-back like Josko Gavardiol of Leipzig who was heavily linked to Chelsea at the climax of the summer transfer window. To close out games or if needed, Nagsman has his team fall into a compact 5-3-2 or a 4-4-2. During Julian Nagsman's two years at RB Leipzig, they finished third and second in the Bundesliga, implementing his tactics and system perfectly. Finally, whilst at Bayern Munich, Nagelsmann decided it was better to stick with the tried and tested 4-2-3-1 which has brought the Bayern squad so much success, where at previous clubs Nagelsmann much favoured a 3 at the back system. This doesn't mean he didn't implement a 3 at the back system at all, but it was far less prevalent. In the 21-22 season, Nagelsmann's Bayern Munich averaged 62% possession, the highest amount in the league. Seeing as the majority of Bayern Munich's play came from possession, let's see how they got on. So, in possession, Bayern Munich would actually look a bit like a 3-3-3-1 during the build-up. Stanisic, who played right back, played a key role for Nagelsmann. Alfonso Davies would push up the field, being in line with the midfield pivot, while Stanisic would slot into a versatile right-sided centre-back of a back three setup. Through during this, the midfield and attack are overloaded with players in between the lines, exactly how Nagelsmann wants to play. This creates excellent passing opportunities along with domination. However, seeing as most teams sit back and pray for their souls when playing against Bayern Munich, Nagelsmann has had to adjust his tactics in order to break down teams sitting back. Under Nagelsmann, Bayern Munich would press high up the field with skillful wingers pushing out wide. This creates a dilemma for the opponent, spread out the defensive shape to defend against the quick feet of wingers and open themselves up to vertical attacks or stay compact and leave their fullbacks vulnerable to one versus one situations. Bayern Munich are of course a team full of world-class, well-coached players with the ability to make line-breaking passes and individual moments of brilliance. Nagsman encourages difficult passes and provides the freedom for his attackers to express themselves. When out of possession, Bayern takes the shape of a 4-2-3-1. The pressing structure isn't as aggressive as Hansi Flick's gegenpress. For more detail on Hansi Flick's tactical brilliance, check out my video covering his career and how he'd fit in at Chelsea once you finish this one. Instead, Julian Nagsman instructed his Bayern side to press in a more methodical manner, with Lewandowski looking to cut off the passing lanes between the centre-backs, forcing the ball to one side or the other in which an overload would occur. In some instances, Thomas Muller would move up the field to press alongside the striker, targeting both centre-backs simultaneously. This was a very effective system I'd love to see implemented at Chelsea. Right, now we know how Nagelsmann likes to play, let's see how I think he was set up at Chelsea. It's really difficult to pinpoint an exact formation. At Hoffenheim, he favoured the 3-4-3. At Leipzig, it was the 3-4-1-2. And at Bayern, he adopted the 4-2-3-1 and added little Nagelsmann traits to it. I do think, however, Julian Nagelsmann would favour the 3-4-3 system at Chelsea as it provides the most balance, defensive stability and encourages possession. That being said, he would implement a three-at-the-back defensive system with players like Levy Cole being exceptionally key as his vertical passes up the field are Julian Nagelsmann's bread and butter. With Thiago Silva turning 39 this year, I think Nagelsmann would look to invest in a long-term replacement, that replacement being Josko Gavardiol. Gavardiol was signed during Nagelsmann's tenure as Leipzig coach and has turned into one of the best young centre-backs in the world and would be an excellent player alongside the likes of Levy Colwell, Benoit Badiashile and Wesley Fofana. The centre-back position can also be held by the likes of Rhys James, who might like to play a Stanisic role, and even Cucurella, who has had a rough start to the season, but it does seem like he has found his form. The key thing that the centre-backs in Nagelsmann's Chelsea will need to do is be confident on the ball and look for vertical passes when the opportunity arises. I must also mention Chelsea are in the market for a new goalkeeper. A key trait to look out for should be ball-playing ability as to fit Nagelsmann's build-up play. 
In the midfield, of course, Enzo Fernandez is an immediate starter. The Argentinian joined Chelsea at the end of the January transfer window and already ranks first for the most progressive passes per 19 this season at 10.3 a game, whilst also ranking first for the most touches on average this season at 107. It's clear that under Nagelsmann, most of the game will start and involve Enzo Fernandez, whether he's switching the ball across the field, playing a ball over the top, or even making a quick pass to beat the press and open up the play. Julian Nagelsmann will love working with Enzo. Chelsea will also be in the market for a defensive midfielder to complement Enzo in the pivot and allow him to press up the field more. A lot like how Joshua Kimmich sat back and allowed Leon Goretzka to really involve himself in the press and the attack. Romeo Lavia of Southampton has been heavily linked with the Blues and in my opinion would be a fantastic signing. Other options include Ugarte of Sporting Lisbon and Declan Rice of West Ham. On the right hand side behind the right forward would be Rhys James and or Malo Gusto. Whenever Rhys James is injured, Gusto will come in. James is a great player to have in that position. Not only can he defend incredibly well and is touted as one of the best right backs in the world, his attacking play is also phenomenal with excellent crossing ability and well-timed overlapping runs. Nagsman likes to rip and drag his opponents apart and I certainly think Rhys James and Malo Gusto are fit to play that role. On the left-hand side, we have Ben Chilwell. Much like Rhys James, he's a defensive player who is lethal high up the pitch. Out of possession, both can press well, drop back into a five-back impenetrable wall. This role will be similar to Alfonso Davies, although Ben Chilwell isn't as fast as the Canadian, he still has the technical ability to work in both a defensive and attacking role. Now, the front three. It's no secret Chelsea will be after a number nine in the summer. Names like Victor Osimhen and Ivan Toney have been heavy on Chelsea's radar, but to me, to get the best out of Julian Nagelsmann, one of the best strikers for the system would be Harry Kane. Harry Kane likes to drop deeper, disrupting the defensive shape before playing a perfect ball over the top to someone like Human Son to capitalise on. This is exactly what Nugsman wants in a striker, there is no question. It's a long shot, but if Chelsea were able to sign Harry Kane in the summer, Julian Nagelsmann will work absolute wonders with the Englishman. Either side of him would be Christopher Nkunku and João Felix. Christopher Nkunku is, of course, an incredible player who has torn up the Bundesliga and Champions League in recent years, winning the Player of the Month award four times in the 21-22 season. This same season, he scored 20 goals and assisted 13, an absolute machine and again, a player Nagelsmann identified and signed during his time at Leipzig. He would be the left forward while Shao Felix would play off the right of the striker. I must say Chelsea's squad allows for tactical changes at the drop of a hat and so the players like McCullum Mudrick and Raheem Sterling can easily find their way into the team based on form and injuries. Mudrick signs an eight and a half year contract and can afford to be broken into the team at Nagelsmann's discretion. Nagelsmann is a young, exciting German coach who has proven himself as one of the best in the world. And seeing as he is now a free agent following his sacking from Bayern Munich, this opportunity for Chelsea is too good to pass up on. In my opinion, it will be in the club's best interest to remove Graham Potter and bring in Julian Nagelsmann. As it's the international break, Julian Nagelsmann has time to settle at Chelsea and his new life in London, whilst also putting together his tactics for the upcoming fixtures. So that's it. What are your thoughts on Julian Nagelsmann? How do you think he would do at Chelsea? What do you think of the video? All important questions that can be answered in the comment section down below. I will be reading all of them and would love to hear your thoughts on Julian Nagelsmann. Each day I creep one step closer to reaching 1000 subscribers and becoming an official YouTube partner. If you've made it this far, please consider subscribing and joining this ever-growing community. Why not? I've been The Quick Take and I'll catch you on the next one. See you later.